Hey everybody, welcome to Crackpot, the podcast where each and every week we dive into a different conspiracy theory. And we discuss the merits or the demerits of each. We're your hosts, I'm Tim. And I'm Zach. Hello, Zach. <laughs> I gotta do more hand gestures. <laughs> yeah. All seven people watching this are very <laughs> impressed. By the way, guys, uh. we got a YouTube page. Check it out. <laughs> if you didn't know, go over there and subscribe. If we can get to a certain number, we can actually like do stuff with it. Yeah. Smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Still we wanna a thing. we wanna be um famous rock stars and movie stars. And the way to get there is by having you guys all go out there and subscribe. I didn't tell you this. Okay, this is this is a tangent. This is not about the topic. Mm. Uh, my daughter had to do a, um, a, a state project at the end of the school year, right? Mm. So everyone did research the state and blah, 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 how oh, high, how low, the senators. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things they had to have on their little poster board was a famous person from the state. <laughs> okay. And- I am not joking. Like, more than half of that class of fourth graders, like, the famous person from their state was a famous YouTuber. And I'm like, what is going on? Whoa. <laughs> it's like they pick, you know, Illinois, and it's like some YouTuber. They're yeah. like, he's got 20, 20 million yeah. followers. I'm like, Abraham Lincoln? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, what? come on, guys. Dude. Anyway. Wow. You sound like a millennial, dude. Today, Zach, we are talking about a topic that absolutely terrified me <laughs> when I was probably six or seven or eight years old. Mm, my favorite. We're not talking ghosts. We're not talking the Bermuda Triangle, which <laughs> both also terrified me at that Lost time. Lost plenty of sleep, yeah. Spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> the world's like most fascinating topic. This is like... What, how Unreal, did it yeah. take us five years to get to this? How did it take us like 40 years to even look into this stuff? I, right. Yeah. What do you know? What have well, you heard? like you, I was walking around terrified like in <laughs> like elementary at school. At any moment, you could just burst into flames. Anything could inside. happen. Yeah. Yeah, and I couldn't do anything about it. Nothing. Yeah. So I've always been terrified of it too. <laughs> you just wake up and all that's left is a leg? Well, yeah. And I guess uh, hypothetically speaking here- Mm-hmm. It could happen during the show. It, it could literally. Guys, go to YouTube. You might see one of us literally spontaneously <laughs> combust. <laughs> yeah. I, I, my grandparents had this like uh, book of the weird paranormal or something. When I was over there, I'd flip through it. And there's yeah. all sorts of cryptids and bizarre <laughs> stuff. And I saw this page and I was like, What's going on? This is a thing I have to worry about now? Yes. So, yes. so you've been worrying the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. All, all 40 years, man. Nothing but worry. All right. Well, let's talk about it. I mean, do you, do you okay, let me, let me, before I go any further, like, do you actually know anything or any anecdotes or anything? Okay. I knew a kid who, come to think of it, looks a lot like you. Uh huh. Who lives not guy. that yeah. far away from here that was just walking down the street and it happened to him once? Uh, oh, yeah? In fact, it was on a night just like tonight. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. No, so I know. Here's here's what I... I'll tell you what I do know about it. Yeah. So there is the quintessential, like, kid image in my mind, which is, yeah, you're just walking down the street and boom, all of a sudden you're up in flames. <laughs> right. But what I, I actually have learned, like, a tiny bit about it, which is basically... It is actually a real thing, but it's not like you just turn into a giant ball of flames. Okay. I think. Okay. So anyways. Maybe the truth is somewhere in between. <laughs> yes. Let's figure it out. All right. Okay. So basically, we're talking about the combustion of a living or sometimes recently deceased mm. human body without an apparent external source of ignition. The belief is, if you believe this... That the fire basically starts inside your body and then envelops you and like there's nothing left except sometimes Jeez. a leg or two. Huh? But what's crazy about this is while there are victims, 
science is out? No kidding. They're like, well, I mean, a lot of a lot of people are like, no, absolutely. That's crazy. Huh. You need a combustion source and you need this and the human body is made up of so much water and mm-hmm. and other people are like, uh, look at these dead bodies, dude. Like yeah. what's going on? Something started them on fire and there was nothing else nearby, so what gives? That's wild. It re- it really is. Okay. <laughs> it really is. So, again, a process in which a human body allegedly catches fire as a result of heat generated by internal chemical activity, but without evidence of an external source of ignition. So that's the general idea. Larry E. Arnold, who I know you know, is he's a uh, he's a director of Parascience International. So kind of a big wig. <laughs> Soon to be board member Larry. Uh, he says there's about 200 cited reports of spontaneous human combustion worldwide over a, a period of around 300 years. Mm. So, OK. For the last 300 years, how many billions of people have been alive on the planet? You right, know, right. 200 cited sources is pretty small. Still a risk. Yeah. I mean, however, 200 people were just living their life and all of a sudden mm. woke up uh, burnt dead. Dang. Okay. It's terrifying, man. So the hypothesis, and this is the, um, those that, believe it but want to find a rational explanation hypothesis Mm -hmm. is they look at the potential causes and mechanisms around like the victim and the behavior and the habits and they tend to find that alcohol consumption is higher among these victims and their proximity to a potential source of ignition is also higher mm. than otherwise. So basically you have alcohol, which is flammable. Yeah. And also could uh, immobilize you if taken in enough quantities. And you're also sitting near, near, I should say, mm-hmm. broadly speaking, a, a flame of some sort. And uh, these behaviors, you know, you light get lit on fire and then uh, the body just basically burns because it's fat and tissue and and Hmm. so on. Okay. The natural explanation as well as uh, unverified natural phenomenon have been proposed to explain spontaneous human combustion. So that's just one idea. Hmm. Okay. We're going to go through a whole host of different ideas and different possible scientific explanations. Era scientific <laughs> explanations, because as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to spontaneous human combustion, like nothing is off the table mm-hmm. because it's just so crazy. And it's it's real in the sense that, like, there are real victims. Yeah. No. So we I, shouldn't be laughing, but we I, sorry. Yeah, we sorry to all those who know one of these 200 people over the last 300 years. But current scientific consensus is that purported cases of spontaneous human combustion involve overlooked external sources of ignition. So they're all explainable. They're all a candle or a furnace or something. Yes. Which is weird because you would think, well, yeah, if it was a if uh, if a furnace blew out or something, or I don't know, sitting too close to the stove, like it's a pretty obvious situation, I think. Whereas what you've described, it sounds like. They can't really find anything nearby or there we I got I got a good list of okay, examples okay. we'll go through and some of the we we can pick them apart but sure yeah but before we do that this is a uh, b- besides being a rather rare occurrence in real life it is a uh, somewhat common literary trope <laughs> so you may have read Bleak House by Charles Dickens there's a I, yeah. I know you have yes a a, a wonderful uh, spontaneous combustion occurs Herman Melville uses oh. in his novel Redburn Mark Twain wrote about this in Twainy. Life on the Mississippi huh. uh, Gogol famous Russian author wrote about it in Dead Souls and of course the uh the band Spinal Tap had two separate drummers both die of the same, <laughs> the same, 
horrible curse for this spontaneous human combustion. I think that's back-to-back shows now that we've had uh, <laughs> spinal, spinal Tap references, at least uh, at least somewhat recently. That's okay. funny. Okay, so, cool. but this is not this is not new. Like I said, you know, three hundred years observed, and people have been trying to figure this out for some time. The uh, British Medical Journal in 1938, there was an article that was cited or they they cited a book published in 1823 in this 1938 article where in 1823 the medical jurisprudence listed six common things they they looked at a whole bunch of cases and they're like you know what here's six common things maybe this will help someone figure out the mystery of spontaneous human combustion so the six common things are one the victims are chronic alcoholics Mm. two they're usually elderly females Mm. three the body has not burned spontaneously but some lighted substance has come into contact with it four the hands and feet usually fall off Mm. (laughs) yeah five the fire has caused very little damage to combustible things in contact with the body Mm. and six the combustion of the body has left a residue of greasy and fetid ashes and a very offensive odor. Mm. So the hands and the feet usually fall off. That is, that's a thing. So like when they find these bodies, it's like, I was joking about like just a leg is left, but like literally sometimes it's just a leg or two or a foot. And the reason Zach is, do you want to take a guess? Why they fall off? Yeah, mean? like why it's just a foot left. Well, the rest is burned. Yeah, the rest <laughs> is burned. And the foot is, uh, there's not a lot of fat on the foot. There's not a lot of muscle yeah. and tissue to burn. Yeah. So once it moves from your core down to your legs, oh. the foot just kind of- Runs boom. out of gas. It runs out of gas. <laughs> Same thing with the hands, I guess. Mm. And uh, another thing we didn't really talk about, but was mentioned in here, the surrounding thing that is- uh, you know, the chair or the bed uh-huh. is not burned. Well, da, 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 da. really? Really. So that's interesting. That I... is a real thing. So it is totally spontaneous. Yes. I mean, except for the fact that sometimes they're near an open flame, but. Yeah. But. I mean, that's weird. It, it, it almost suggests like a different type of fire. Kind of. Like it's a smoldering or something. I don't know. That's like weird. Fire within. Yeah. It burns from within. <laughs> burns, burns, burns. Like yeah. a like a ring of fire almost. Mm. Fascinating. Okay. Wise man once said. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about let's talk about some real life examples, more or less in chronological order. So, Zach, the very first case of recorded spontaneous combustion from the year fourteen hundred. Oh, Polonus Vorstius, a knight in Milan, burst into flames standing in front of his very own parents. He was just hanging out with his parents, talking to him. And this poor knight, poor Polonus, just burst into flames. It was said that he belched fire after consuming a few glasses of a particularly strong wine. Mm. But he wasn't smoking. He wasn't standing near like a a fireplace or something. Right, right, right. He just burst into flames. Well, he sure showed them, right? I guess, yeah. Um, Whatever they were probably arguing about. (laughs) You just assume. Yeah. It's arguing with his parents. I like uh, like that's where your head goes. um, Yeah, that's... That's weird. Yeah. It's weird. It's also 1400, so it's like, "Eh, my next thought. Okay, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. All right, let's move up a little bit. 1745, Countess Cornelia Zangaria de Brandy of Cessna. 1745, she went to bed early, and the next morning, the Countess's chambermaid found her in a pile of ashes. Disturbing. Yeah. Partially burned head. And stocking adorned legs were all that remained. Two candles were in the room. Okay. But the wicks were untouched. See. And intact. I knew it. What gives? I knew it. This one you cannot explain. You can't explain it. Except for like murder. She went to bed and woke up dead, man. Yeah. I don't get it. 
It's weird. Well, because nobody witnessed it, I have to think yeah. murder, foul play. But who wants to who wants to murder the poor dear Countess Cornelia Zangiria de Bandy of Cessnia? I've never heard a single person <laughs> say anything bad about her. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to say, man. Okay, 1745. I know you're still thinking. Eh, Long time ago. Yeah. <sighs> okay, let's move up a little bit. Matilda Rooney, Christmas Eve, 1885, mm. Seneca, Illinois. She's alone in her kitchen. The fire quickly incinerated her entire body except her feet. This fire also claimed her husband, Patrick, who didn't burn to death, but died suffocating in the flames. Oh, my gosh. No reason to suspect foul play, but they had both been relaxing and drinking whiskey that evening, Mm. which, hey, it's Christmas Eve. That's right. You're in Seneca, Illinois. What else are you going to do, I assume? But a farmhand, their farmhand was there earlier in the evening, and he spent a couple hours with them just relaxing and talking about the farm, I assume. Talking about not spontaneously (laughs) combusting. (laughs) Wouldn't it be great if we all woke up not burnt to a crisp tomorrow? Uh, But anyway, he said that he hadn't noticed anything out of the ordinary. No one was on edge. No one was doing anything different. (laughs) They were just sitting around, relaxing, drinking whiskey. I did notice some smoke coming out of (laughs) what's-his-name's mouth. But anyways. Yeah. So (laughs) they looked around. They searched. Obviously, the coroner did his thing. No source of ignition could be found. Um, It was intense enough to reduce her to ashes and just a few fragments of bone, which is an incredibly high heat. Like it's over 3000 degrees centigrade, I think, or Fahrenheit. I could be wrong, Mm. but it's like a crematorium gets incredibly hot to get the body down and it takes a period of time. So like this fire that consumed her was not like a normal right. fire. Right. No, she sounds pretty hot. Ashes and bone fragment. They're careful what you say about Matilda Rooney, Zach, please. But also, interestingly, such a hot fire didn't spread to the rest of the room. That's what's weird. Didn't burn right. up the house. No, makes no... Like, if something... If I were to put a log yeah. in the middle of the room that's burning at 3,000 degrees, <laughs> right. the whole house would go. You would assume so, right? Yeah. Fire started in her body and stayed confined to her body. Mm. What gives? I don't know, man. Okay. I know what you're thinking. 1885. Long time ago. Long time ago. Let's move up a little bit. Mary Reeser, July 2nd, 1951. Okay. Okay. Modern times. Modern times. (laughs) Color television. Oh, close. Yeah, close. (laughs) Okay. 67 years old. She was found burned to death in her house after her landlady realized that her house's doorknob was unusually warm. Mm. Police, upon entering the house, found her remains completely burned into ash with only one leg remaining. Yeah. Which is just creepy. The hallmark. It's the hallmark of spontaneous combustion. Okay. The chair she was sitting in was also destroyed. Mm. Reeser also was known to take sleeping pills, and was a smoker. Okay. I can't think of anything right now that would link any of this, but okay. (laughs) Link those those facts to this (laughs) outcome. The theory, of course, is that she was smoking a cigarette after taking sleeping pills and then fell asleep while holding the cigarette or it fell on her or something, which could have ignited her gown, ultimately leading to her death. And uh, I th- I don't know if this was the uh, newspaper report or the coroner said the cigarette dropped to her lap. The fat, her fat was the fuel that kept her burning. The floor was cement and the chair was uh, by itself. Therefore, nothing around it could burn. Okay. So maybe we can explain that one. Maybe. Maybe. However, look, man, lots of people smoke. Yeah, thank you. And... Lots of people fall asleep. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, not a lot of spontaneous combustion. You're what right. gives? You're right. There's Come no, on. There's no smoking gun here. <laughs> there's no smoking leg here. Okay. I know what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. 1959. Let's move up a little bit. Yes. Margaret Hogan, March 28th, 1970. Okay. 89 years old. Mm. Okay. 
So she's a widow who lived alone in a house in Dublin, Ireland. The plastic flowers on a table in the center of the room had been reduced to liquid. The television across the room had a melted screen that was, it was 12 feet away from where they found her body in her armchair. But her, all that remained of her body were ashes. Sure. That was it. Mm. So an incredibly intense, hot flame. Otherwise, the rest of the room, the surroundings were almost completely untouched. Mm, That's weird. And I should say her two feet and both legs below the knees were undamaged. And I think this is the one where you can find pictures of it. Oh. (laughs) I I am laughing because it's morbid, and that's my my gut reaction. It's not funny. Yeah. It's just like a burned chair and like... Shoes, basically. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it, yeah. is, it is wild. It just blows my mind. Anyway, there was, however, a small coal fire that had been burning in the grate when a neighbor left the house the previous day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, maybe. Yeah, she'd have to be like huffing those fumes, I would yeah, think. Yeah, I mean, I. Uh, yeah, okay. Most people. Uh, the coroner, other people said, you know, no connection between the fire in the grate and the fire that she became could be found. And her uh, officially, they recorded her death by burning cause of fire listed as unknown. Sure. There you go. There you go. It's real. Yep. yep. According yep. to this guy in Dublin that wrote that up. Henry Thomas, 1980, was 73 years old in South Wales. His entire body was incinerated, leaving only his skull and a portion of each leg below the knee. The feet and legs were still clothed in the socks and trousers. So not even the socks or the trousers caught on fire. Yeah, very peculiar. Just like, what is going on? Half the chair in which he had been sitting was also destroyed. The police forensic officers decided that the incineration of Thomas was due to the wick effect. And we're going to get to that. Okay. We're going to get to that later. Yeah, it sounds like a specific thing. All right. It is a specific thing, and it's gruesome and awful, but we'll talk about it. Hang tight. Okay. Michael Faraday, December 2010. Like yesterday. (laughs) Basically. 76 years old. He's in County Galway in Ireland. The recorded death that the coroner put down was... Spontaneous combustion. <laughs> We've got a official like, <laughs> like on the record here. 2010, baby. This ain't yeah. 1745. Yeah. The doctor said, quote, this fire was thoroughly investigated, and I'm left with the conclusion that this fits into the category of spontaneous hum- human combustion, for which there is no adequate explanation. That's the kind of doctor I like. <laughs> He's like, you. look, man, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's unknown. <laughs> Dude burst into flames. What else do you want me to say here? Come on. So no accelerants near the body. No signs of foul play. They ruled out any nearby fireplace at the scene as a culprit. Fire damage had been done to the ceiling above and the floor beneath, but nothing else in the room was touched. Very peculiar. Just literally burst into flames. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Two more here. Two more here. George Mott, 58-year-old retired firefighter, uh, 1986 in Crown Point, New York. He was found in his apartment. All that was left was a leg, a shrunken skull, and a piece of his rib cage. Just bizarre. Mm -hmm. And probably the weirdest one of all, Frank Baker, Vermont, 1985, spontaneously... Combusted while sitting on his couch, unlike the others, he lived to tell the tale. No way. Yes. Okay, finally. He's like, I was sitting there. <laughs> I caught on fire. <laughs> I stopped, dropped, and rolled. I don't know. I don't, I literally, I, I am sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I know you want to know how to put this out. Yeah. I don't have that information. Look up Frank Baker in Vermont, 1985. But he, I don't know, drank 12 glasses of water, took a bath, jumped in the shower. That. Put the fire out, and he's like, "Guys, this is real. Like, <laughs> this happened." 
happen to me? This dude's got to have a blog, right? <laughs> I assume so. Let's get him on the show if he's still around. Yeah. Like, what is going on? Any sort of explanations? What can you think of? Well, okay. So putting aside the idea that, okay, if you're going to drink like 12 gallons of whiskey and then like have a cigarette, <laughs> like that's a pretty high risk of fire, I have to assume, even though it doesn't, I don't know how that would work still. <laughs> that'd be logical. Sure, sure. You know, what kind of uh, captures my attention is the idea that maybe just like the wrong mix of bodily chemicals occurs. It's yeah. almost like, I forget the two, what is it, Cl- uh, bleach and something else. If you mix it, it makes a toxic, like it takes it makes like mustard gas. <laughs> but they're like two common household, you know, yeah. things. Yeah. The same thing could apply here. I don't know, white blood cells and red blood cells start <laughs> fighting and mixing and all of a sudden, boom, you got an explosion. Like, I Oh, could- do I have theories for you? <laughs> If you, if you think that's possible. No, I, I, know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. It's just like, I don't know, the body's weird. It's yeah. making millions and billions of chemical reactions every second. Yeah. Like, who's to say something just goes haywire right. every, you know, once every six billion humans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could, I could like, see how that's a thing. But I have a really hard time understanding how a person <laughs> could just start okay. on fire. <laughs> okay, I have... I have Two explanations that are somewhat natural, okay? Okay. All right. I mean, I'm also going to come out and say, like, none of these are good. Like, none of these possibilities or or, uh, theories are are great. But anyway, first one, natural explanation, ketosis. So ketosis is when your body lacks carbohydrates and it starts to turn fats into ketones. It's Mm -hmm. what... um, the whole uh, slow carb stuff, exactly, low carb movement. exactly, yeah. yeah. So, possibly caused by low carb dieting. Another cause is possibly alcoholism, but it produces an acetone, mm. which is highly flammable. Mm-hmm. So maybe your body just has more flammable liquid in it, potentially. Yeah, if you are a heavy drinker. Like an alcoholic, you're producing the the acetones or, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, like putting your body through ketosis. So, yeah. okay. Well, can I offer a personal anecdote here? Yes. So a few years back when I was really, really getting into uh, working out, yeah. I had a low-carb diet. Yeah, yeah. And I would feel after I ate uh, a protein-heavy food, my whole body would feel warm. Oh, interesting. Which I assumed was some, you know... Metabolic, metabolic process, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so I can personally say, like, <laughs> okay, I know that feeling. Like you do feel warm. It feels like you have a temp. Interesting. Uh, and you don't register a temp, but it feel, like you feel like you inside. You feel warm. the heat. Yeah. That's that's wild. So you would put that that possible. It makes sense, actually. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. Okay. All right. Hey, why not? Another explanation uh, for some, but not all of these: self immolation as a form of. Suicide. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. I so mean, but they you, they are purposely caused. Yeah, but so. the, the the issue with that, I mean, that is a very logical explanation, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. The issue with that is it doesn't sound like they found anything that would suggest that at yeah. these different bodies. Exactly. So. Exactly. It it cannot check every single box. Yeah. And it's it's a very uncommon form of suicide in the West, but uh, I saw some numbers that uh, in in other parts of the world it it yeah. can be much higher potentially. So eh, okay. maybe maybe not. Eh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe one out of three hundred. Maybe. I suppose. Potentially. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about some alternative theories, as I've labeled them on my notes here. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Okay. <laughs> This one. Uh, remember Larry? Yeah. <laughs> Larry E. Arnold? He wrote a book in 1995 called A Blaze! With an exclamation point. I will be checking this out from my local library later. Where he proposed a pseudoscientific new subatomic particle, which he called the Pyrotron. I knew it. It was going to be some stupid name. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Should I? Yeah. Okay. All right. The Pyrotron. He says, look, extreme stress could be the trigger that starts many combustions. And this process may use no external oxygen to spread throughout the body since it may not be an oxidation reduction reaction. However, basically, 
Okay. <laughs> Basically, what he's saying is that this is a new form of like uh, quantum physics. Yes. He's, he's discovered something like. that Schrodinger and Einstein and Bohr and all these other guys have uh, have not fi- figured out yet. But he's saying there's an extremely small but highly powered particle like a neutrino that zips through the spaces between the quarks that make up the atoms, which compose the molecules of the human body. And on rare occasions, mm. a rogue pyrotron particle scores a direct hit with a quark that sets off an internal chain reaction. Mm-hmm. Well, I can't outright disprove that, so I'm inclined to believe it. <laughs> This is quite literally the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever said on this entire show. It I, just sounds made up. So it, made it is. Up. It yeah. is. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's made up, but it sounds, it also sounds made up. Yeah. Uh, the, all I would say is if you're going to create some fringe theory, just don't give it a dumb name like a pyrotron. Give it something that sounds real. Like, you know, I don't know. Uh, P72436. When this, <laughs> you know, right. invisible particle, whatever, whatever. No, talk about quantum physics, man. It's fascinating without your stupid crap tied to it. Okay, okay. Here's another one. This is called Kundalini. Ever heard of it? <laughs> I think I tried that once on the beach. <laughs> I think I get the joke. All right. So this is, okay, this is actually, this is an energy that flows up and down the spinal column of every living human being. This, is that real? It, this is a well-known Eastern Ew. physician and metaphysician uh, uh, thing. Okay, okay, okay. And yeah. you and I in our Westocentric whatever aren't it, really in tune with uh, Kundalini. It probably relates to like uh, acupuncture stuff. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. Right. So... This is a very powerful bioenergy that occurs among psychokinetic phenomenon and can produce intense internal temperature spikes when it's out of balance, at least according to these practitioners. So they say that some people can increase their kundalini. And I'm look, I'm probably mispronouncing this. So just Mm -hmm. bear with me. But some people can increase their kundalini energy through meditation, while others have reported spontaneous movement of energy throughout the body. And uh, basically, you can picture the out-of-balance energy as a quasi-plasm-like ball that seems to originate in the abdominal region, and whatever lies anatomically beyond the radius of that ball of energy usually escapes incineration but sometimes Mm. it is just so out of whack that you just burst into flame so i do kind of believe that acupuncture works for a lot of people well acupuncture does work yeah but but also dude my insurance like recognizes acupuncture so but but to accept it as a real thing it means you also need to accept some of the theories behind it one of them do you though yeah, I mean, okay. because, you know, like, it's all based on the, it's almost like the ley lines of the human body, <laughs> but these very specific, like, energy paths, uh-huh, and uh-huh. Up, there seems to be a very specific correlation between some of these things. Okay. And um, I could, like, I know it sounds weird to use general terms like heat and balls of energy, but, like, we can't explain it yet, so maybe there's something to it. Okay. I could believe this. You could believe it to the point where... Th- the chakras are so out of line that you burst into flame? Well, when you say it like that, no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, say it in a way that works for you. Sure. I believe that the human body still has mysteries, you know, that scientists don't understand, and therefore, there could be, like, energy currents coursing through our bodies. Totally. And if something gets out of whack, then yeah, something, everything else gets thrown off. Why not? Okay. Okay, man. I'm not judging you. Yes, you are. I, just, I don't I'm care though. I'm just asking you questions. <laughs> okay, I'm let's get back. Let's get back into some friendlier territory. <laughs> oh, that's your fault. <laughs> okay. Poltergeist activity. Okay, I believe it. <laughs> this makes a lot of sense to me. Does already. it? Walk yeah. me through it. Do you want, I mean, I, I want to hear you before I talk. Well, it's, it's obvious. Yeah. So you've got a poltergeist living with you. Mm-hmm. And this thing is a known trickster. Yep. And what happens is, uh, as part of its tricks, it's not just like throwing, you know, cups off the old yes. Yes. Know, shelf. It is suddenly going a step further and maybe either 
incidentally or on purpose mm-hmm. setting somebody on fire. And there's no trace because guess what? Jokes on you. It was <laughs> a poltergeist. A <laughs> yeah. so. And all the evidence is uh, is burnt up. Okay. Yeah, I mean <laughs> Basically, that's it. But check this out. Okay. In his 1976 book, Fire from Heaven, UK writer. (laughs) Yeah, great, great title. UK writer Michael Harrison suggests that spontaneous human combustion is connected to poltergeist activity. He says the force which activates the poltergeist originates in and is supplied by a human being. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the poltergeist comes from a human. The spontaneous combustion is obviously human related. He says uh, spontaneous human combustion, fatal or not fatal, belongs to the extensive range of poltergeist phenomenon. Check this out. January 30th, 31st, and February 1st, 1932. Some 20 fires erupted in five different rooms at the Elm Street home of Council H. Williamson and his wife in Bladenboro, North Carolina. The first fire... January 30th, a window shade and curtain burned in the dining room. Not long after, another shade in the same room caught fire. The next day, with guests visiting, a set of bedclothes ignited and a stack of papers stored in the closet burst into flames. Later, a pair of trousers hanging in a closet caught on fire. And to top it all off, a young girl in the home barely escaped getting burned when her dress caught fire. There you go. Classic poltergeist. Classic poltergeist. Have you have you literally ever heard I mean have you ever heard of a poltergeist lighting stuff on fire? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were joking. No. No. That's a thing? I, I take poltergeists very seriously. I know you do, which is yeah. why I'm asking you. You hear about all kinds of crazy stuff. Well, I know they, like, knock stuff over and throw yeah. chairs, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Fires okay. is a step too far when it comes to my paranormal activity. With poltergeists, everything's off the table. On the table? On the table. And then they throw it off the table. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I took it a step further. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the deal. So, th- so this theory actually is kind of cool if you think about it, because... There is a strong belief in the poltergeist community, of which I'm a member. Yes, <laughs> card-carrying member. Um, and that is basically, it's it's like psi. It operates from within, right? So yeah. uh, the, they've found correlations between teenagers, Yeah, like teenage girls. Yep, and also poltergeist activity. There, it's, it's a weird correlation. And perhaps whatever is controlling psi and telepathy and all this crazy stuff is the same and it's just something in your body gets out of whack and it's channeling a different source of energy and you go up and smoke that's wild yeah i do have to say though that most of the victims are elderly so i mean yeah. it doesn't really it fit cuts the, against that yeah for sure. yeah but i i like that you are like latching onto this oh yeah i could see myself believing this <laughs> that's wild yeah. yeah yeah okay all right how about ball lightning <laughs> How about Jupiter? <laughs> <laughs> John Abramson has suggested that ball lightning could account for spontaneous human combustion. He says, this is circumstantial only, but the charring of human limbs seen in a number of ball lightning cases are very suggestive that this mechanism may also have occurred where people have had limbs combusted. Ball lightning's weird, man. There's not really anything to it that we know about yeah, but it's a theory it's it, that exists well that's it's it's kind of like spontaneous combustion in the sense that like the jury isn't even fully out or in yes. on whether it's real or not real yes that's a really great point yeah 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 so in a weird way spontaneous combustion is the ball lightning and the ball lightning is the, <laughs> right, <laughs> of one another first yeah the chicken or the egg the but ball then, lightning or the combustion but here's what i'd say though so ball lightning we don't get it etc cetera, etc cetera. But that would mean it'd have to travel inside. Yeah, which it does on occasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a rare, okay, rare and unexplained phenomenon described as luminescent spherical objects that vary from either pea-sized to several meters in diameter, and they're usually associated with thunderstorms. The observed phenomenon is reported to last considerably longer than the split-second flash of a lightning bolt, but... 
people have seen them or reported them like going in a window and like mm. down a hall and then just like vanishing. Okay, that's a ghost. That's an orb. <laughs> hey, baby, man. Yeah, orbs. It's it's kind of like, it it's like up there. Yeah. I'm I'm more of a believer in orbs and ball lightning, but I'm not I'm not discounting ball yeah. lightning. Yeah, no, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, anyway, ball lightning has appeared in a variety of accounts over centuries and has received attention from scientists who mostly discount it. Uh huh. Because science tends to operate on uh, the theory that things have to be replicated, and ball lightning doesn't like to be replicated in yeah. order to be studied. So yeah. take that, science. All right. This one, this one's cool, because uh, guess what? Ley lines, cartography of combustion. This is not a theory as to how it starts, maybe, or maybe it is. I don't know. I'm just going to read this. Just bear with me. This gentleman says, I've plotted the many instances of abnormal fire phenomenon relating to people and property in the United Kingdom. I've noted that most can be connected by straight alignments. Some lines link five, six, or sometimes a dozen anomalous fires. This is somewhat similar to the idea of ley lines, which are based on the supposed geographic alignment of things like ancient monuments and other places of interest that are traditionally associated with earth energy mysteries. I believe these connections follow lines of energy that flow around the planet and that heretofore unknown and unidentified geophysical energy under the correct circumstances, can cause spontaneous combustion in property, buildings, and people. Hmm. All right. So. Okay. Ley lines, spontaneous combustion, energy vortexes. What do you think? Direct correlation. Clearly. Yeah. No, you can probably draw straight lines everywhere to connect all these people. <laughs> <laughs> I could draw a line between any two of these, and it's a straight line. What gives? Uh-huh. No, but I mean, if, I, I have not seen the map, so I don't know. I can't yeah. verify this. But I mean, if you could literally draw a straight line between a dozen spontaneous yeah, right. human combustion cases, that's crazy. That'd actually be crazy. <laughs> that would be wild, man. Okay, well, let's talk about science. Let's, let's talk about what they think about this this stuff. So an extensive two-year research project involving 30 historical cases of alleged spontaneous human combustion was conducted in 1984 by science investigator Joe Nickel and forensic analysis John F. Fisher. They looked at cases in the 18th century, 19th century, 20th centuries, and they showed that the burned bodies were close to plausible sources for the ignition, such as candles, lamps, fireplaces, cigarettes, so on, and found that there was a correlation between alleged spontaneous human combustion deaths and the victim's intoxication or other forms of incapacitation, which could conceivably have caused them to be careless and unable to respond properly to the accident. So yeah. the getting drunk, I know we think like alcohol is flammable, therefore their body is more flammable. It's like, no, you're so drunk, you catch on fire and you don't wake up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. So nearby objects often remain undamaged because fires tend to burn upwards and only burn laterally with difficulty and plenty of fuel. Mm. So that is why you and maybe your chair will catch on fire, but nothing else in the room. Because, sure. hey, heat rises, fire goes up, yeah. not out. Okay. No other explanation shows how a body would or could suddenly burst into flames. So say the scientists. Concentration of alcohol, even in very intoxicated people, is too low to make the body more flammable. Mm -hmm. So take that. makes that. sense. Yeah. But severe intoxication can make someone immobile. Now, the wick effect. Mm. Thank you for staying all the way to the end for this gruesome thing that you can uh, take home. Turn it off if you don't want to hear about how the human body burns. Clothing worn by the victim will soak up the melted fat. And acts like a wick of a candle. So conditions exist for the body to smolder for an extended period of time. 
And even lean people who are normal weighted or even underweighted have several pounds of fat and other tissue that will burn. And this fat, once heated by the burning clothes, wicks into the clothing, much like a candle wax is drawn into a lit candle wick, providing the fuel needed to keep the wick burning. And the protein in the body also burns, but provides less energy than the fat with the water in the body being the main impediment to combustion. However, it slowly evaporates and lasts for hours. And uh, the feet don't burn because there's no fat on the feet, which we mm-hmm. talked about before. Okay. So that is more information than you probably ever wanted to know about that. But uh, we are talking about humans combusting spontaneously. So I yeah. guess we had to throw that in there. That's the wicking effect. But anyway, man, we talked about a bunch of cases. We talked about a bunch of hypotheses. What what gives? Well, uh, I still believe it. Okay, cool. And also a thought crossed my mind, which is, hey, look, you know, I'm assuming thousands of people die in fires every year. Yes. And in many of those cases, uh, the whole building goes up with them. Yes. Which leads me to think maybe we have some undiscovered cases of spontaneous combustion. Really? Like that? I was like, wait a second. Um, Okay. So it could be more common. So if you're not sitting on a chair in the middle of your concrete room. Yeah. 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 Maybe maybe like (laughs) the people that have been documented, you know, having gone through this. Maybe they, they are the edge cases, like the outliers oh. within the broader phenomenon. Like Dude, that, you just blew my mind. I know. I just thought of that a few minutes ago. I was like, <laughs> I, I can't wait to say this. Uh, so, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, honestly, directly, can humans just start on fire? Yeah, I could see it. I have a hard time, like, mentally picturing, okay, unless you're, like I said, huffing, like, a fire. <laughs> or, after, the, or the pyrotrons. Yeah. I, I I just have a hard time imagining how it would work unless it were something we just don't understand in terms of whether it's the acupuncture type energy sure, grids sure, sure, across sure, the human yeah. body or poltergeist type activity. Like, well, it, it's clearly rare. It's clearly not yeah. something that happens every single day. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> thank goodness. Otherwise, this probably wouldn't be a topic on this show. It would be a much more observed phenomenon. But like, even if it's one out of a billion. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. No, it's true. It's true. So I could see any one of these theories, I mean, not all of them, of course, <laughs> but like really any one of them having directionally accurate uh, information. Yeah, just, just there, there's a, a kernel of truth. Yeah, some viability. An ember of truth. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Glowing. Glowing within that. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I don't know. Uh, so you did the research. Where'd you come down? You know, I... I believe that most of these examples are probably they're able to explain them away. Yeah. That being said, even if there is just one. Yeah, right, right. Even if there is just one where a human spontaneously combusted, and I believe there are. Mm. I certainly believe there are. It is just, it's baffling. It's confusing and it's frightening and I was hoping to go into this and like just calm, you know, little seven year old Tim, like, don't yeah, worry, you're not yeah, gonna yeah. spontaneously combust as right. you lay in bed tonight. Now I'm I'm probably more worried than I was going into it. And I heard the more you worry about it, the more likely it is to happen. Yeah, that's true, man. My chakra is all out of whack. So add that to my list of worries. <laughs> so All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Uh, If you haven't already, uh, rate, review, and subscribe. It really does help us. I know we say it a lot. Also, we got a Patreon out there. We do. So check that out if you want all sorts of uh, other shows and episodes just like this, plus some bonus content. Where can they find it? Patreon.com slash Crackpot Podcast. Check it out. All right. Rate, review, subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Tell your local firefighter about our podcast. And we will see you next week. Thanks, everybody.